The Industrial Revolution, which began in Europe during the late 18th century, revolutionized how people lived and worked. After the War of 1812, the United States began its own process of industrialization called the Market Revolution. The Market Revolution in the United States led to significant economic and social changes while contributing to a growing sense of sectionalism in antebellum or pre-Civil War America. The market revolution began when American entrepreneur Francis Cabot Lowell began to open a series of textile mills in Massachusetts starting in 1814. Lowell built his mills after visiting textile factories in Great Britain. Using the British system of manufacturing as a model, Lowell introduced mass production of cotton cloth to the United States. Lowell's factories employed thousands of young women from the surrounding countryside and later on a growing number of immigrants coming from Europe. Lowell hoped to avoid the uglier aspects of industrialization and offer a model for the rest of the country to follow. In the mills, young women worked 10 to 12 hour days. The factory girls, as they were called, were also encouraged to take classes, attend church, and they were strictly supervised in a dormitory-like setting. Despite these intentions, many critics observed how workers were often exploited and suffered a variety of work-related ailments, which led to calls for labor reform that would continue throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. By 1860, over one million workers were engaged in some type of factory work. Industrialization also led to an increase in urban population called urbanization. In 1820, there was only one city in America with a population over 100,000. That was New York City. By 1860, there were eight such cities. The urban population almost tripled from 7% in 1820 to 20% in 1860. Most of this urban and industrial growth took place in the north. Meanwhile, the south remained largely agricultural and rural. Starting in 1810, Cotton became the dominant cash crop in the South, thanks mostly to the invention of the cotton gin by Eli Whitney. In 1791, the South produced 6,000 bales of cotton. By the 1840s, Southerners were producing more than 2 million bales each year, and by 1860, annual production had reached over 4 million bales. This increased cotton production went hand in hand with an increase in slavery. There were indications that slavery was beginning to phase out by the late 18th century. The growth of the cotton industry, however, reversed that trend. Between 1820 and 1850, the number of enslaved peoples in America grew from one and a half million to almost four million. The market revolution of the antebellum era offers a glimpse of two regions of the country that were growing further apart. While the North was becoming increasingly more urban and industrial, the South was growing more agricultural and rural and relying more than ever on slave labor. And despite the growing calls for abolition in the North, it must be recognized that the textile industry in the North was fueled by slave labor in the South. Where would these differences eventually lead us to? I think you all know the answer to that, but that is a topic for another video lecture. Until then, good night.